ASUS multiple attempts to hide their faulty BIOS did not work and even their latest beta BIOSes weren't able to fix the problem for 3D CPUs. As a result, the company is now forced to change its stance on its warranty policies and has provided an update on the matter. It looks like the backlash was pretty strong against the company and now it seems that ASUS motherboard users won't be in deep trouble like they were before. Let's see what steps ASUS took in order to maintain its reputation but before that make sure to subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss any latest updates in the future. Just 3 days ago, ASUS removed its warranty disclaimer for its AM5 motherboards along with all the previous BIOS versions that were known to cause the overvoltage problem for Ryzen 7000 CPUs. Previously, in the disclaimer, it refused to give any warranty on the beta BIOSes even for the latest 1.0.0.7 Agesa BIOS which was meant to fix the high SoC voltage. And now after removing the disclaimer, ASUS released an official statement regarding the latest issue. It says that now the company will cover its beta and fully validated BIOS versions for its AM5 motherboards. And not only that, but it will also cover AMD Expo and Intel XMP configurations under warranty too. So no more hassle for those who wanted to use AMD Expo for memory overclocking and also for those who have been using a beta BIOS. Now the company has also updated its firmware page where the only supported BIOS version is the Agesa 1.0.0.7a which should probably fix the overvoltage problem. The only thing now left is AMD's decision to change the warranty policy for Expo usage because it has been using the same for its tests. Nonetheless, the ASUS policy change was a well-needed move and even though it is a little too late, users who own an ASUS AM5 motherboard will now run their computers at peace. The next interesting stuff we have today is MediaTek's plan to use NVIDIA GPU architectures for their mobile devices. As reported by Digitimes, the giant semiconductor company is going to use NVIDIA GPUs for the next generation flagship mobile chips the next year. This will help MediaTek develop handset platforms that will enhance both AI and gaming functionalities of MediaTek's processors. On top of that, the company is also going to collaborate with NVIDIA for Windows notebooks as well. This means NVIDIA will now start gaining more revenue after its revenue decline in the last quarter and the competition in mobile devices will further escalate. Unlike the desktop platform, mobile devices are right now far more competitive and have improved in price to performance ratio several times compared to what we see in the desktop segment. This is because there are quite a number of great manufacturers for mobile platforms and the user base is also far bigger than the desktop users. That said, NVIDIA is now likely to compete with AMD in handheld consoles because NVIDIA is expected to produce an updated Tegra SoC for the Nintendo Switch successor console and we probably will see NVIDIA GPUs in MediaTek powered consoles too that usually use ARM Mali GPUs. Still, AMD is becoming more dominant in handheld consoles than ever before thanks to the ROG Allies capability which can also allow users to emulate several consoles like PSP, PS3, Xbox 360 and even Nintendo Switch. The console provides decent performance per watt for emulating these consoles and that too on higher resolutions as tested by ETA Prime. And lastly, two big updates on graphics cards. Number one is the discontinuation of the RTX 3060 Ti. The report comes from board channels which confirms that Nvidia has stopped the supply of 3060 Ti chips so that it can make way for the RTX 4060 GPUs including both Ti and non-Ti editions. The green team has supposedly ramped up the production of these graphics cards because the 4060 Ti 8 GB launch date is very close and the other two GPUs will also be launched within two months. Currently, there is no solid leak on the pricing of 4060 GPUs even though we are very close to the launch date but we do have the pricing leaks for the Radeon RX 7600 GPU which is the second big update in the GPU segment. As per Kau Kotlin, the RX 7600 will be launching for 349 euros in France which roughly converts up to 330 dollars including a 20% VAT by the French government. Another recent price leak was reported by Video Cards which found out that PCCanada.com is currently listing a Sapphire RX 76 gaming OC for 452 Canadian dollars and an MSI RX 7600 Mac 2 X Classic 8G OC for 444 Canadian dollars. Even though these cards are out of stock right now as the official launch date is 25th of this month, we can still get an idea of how much these cards will be priced in the United States. Both these cards convert to around 330 US dollars and this further strengthens the claim by Cow Kotlin that the RX 7600 is supposedly going to be priced between 300 to 330 dollars. 
To me, this doesn't look impressive at all because it was expected that it was going to launch somewhere between $250 to $280 as the 8GB cards that cost over $300 have already lost appeal. Seeing this, it looks like Nvidia is probably pricing its RTX 4060 for around $350 and the 4060 Ti 8GB for $400 or higher. So these prices make the older generation cards much more appealing but of course, they do come with some limitations compared to the latest gen graphics cards like the lack of AV1 encoding support which is a deal breaker for many. Only if Nvidia could price the 8GB GPUs for less than $350, it would make much more sense because we have already seen how modding a 3070 with more VRAM impacts the gaming performance which I have talked about in this video right here. Lastly, don't forget to hit the like button if you found the video informative and subscribe for more regular stories like this. Also make sure to turn on the notifications to never miss any latest uploads to the channel and I will see you in the next one.